An emergency meeting for presidents has been arranged in Canada just after the Heritage Foundation published this year's issue for the Economic Index. This is a very serious issue, as this type of media can change others' perspectives on their country. CIA for You News has the latest news. Uh, welcome everybody to the annual G4 Summit. Very nice to meet you from Belgium. Nice to meet you. Let's get down to business. On the agenda for today, we will be talking about the Heritage Foundation's annual index. Personally, I believe this index by the Heritage Foundation is a wake-up call to my beloved country. Greece scored a very unfortunate economic freedom score of 55.4, therefore making us the 117th freest country on their index. Although we are reasonably high in terms of our business freedom and trade freedom, I'm sad to say we are in ongoing economic depression with a big public debt. I'm very proud of my beautiful and culture-filled country, but I understand what this index is hinting towards us. We need to get our stuff together. Well, according to the Heritage Foundation, Belgium's economic freedom score is 69.2, making its economy the 40th freest in the 2013 index. They say the overall score has increased by 0.2 points from the previous year. They say that my beautiful Belgium is ranked 18th among the 43 countries in the Europe region, and its overall score is above the regional and global averages, I'm very proud to say. Which is all true. The Heritage Index discusses the massive grounds of government debt that we carry. I guess this is true, but I think we can handle it. The only complaint that I have with the Index is that they do not have enough faith in us. We will fix our problems. No big deal. Although our freedom score is an 88.0, making us in second place, this Index is not very useful. The author's study used a very narrow spectrum to determine whether a country is labeled as economically freedom. They use an inefficient way of classifying each country, even though we are much, 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 much higher than the rest of the world. I am still not a fan of the heritage. This way of classification is insufficient and isn't powerful enough to determine a country's ranking. Well, according to Heritage, with the world rank of third place on the index, what's there really to complain about? An economic freedom score of 82.6 is pretty darn good, and all I can say is the people of Australia could agree also. With a stable financial system and our debt well under control, I can only say it's not only good review for the reputation of Australia, but also a fine way to encourage people to immigrate to this beautiful country and start their businesses of their own. Greece is a gorgeous country. In fact, it's the seventh most visited country in the European Union. My democratic country's economy mainly revolves around the service, industry, and agriculture sector, and like Canada, falls under having a semi-socialist and capitalist system. Unfortunately, Greece has faced a huge recession in the last few years due to it having the highest budget def deficit and government debt from the GDP ratios from in the European Union. This has led to poverty and unemployment levels increasing, and we'll expect to. It brings me to tears thinking about my beautiful country and being such a state like this. It makes me sick to my stomach. I can't even enjoy a plate of Slovakia without someone, aka the Index, mentioning our economic depression. Ah yes, my beautiful, scrumptious Belgium. Our economy is hugely service-oriented. I'm very proud to say that it is one of the founding members of the European Union. Belgium has a highly developed free market economy based on industrial and service sectors. We have a framework of federal parliamentary, representative, democratic, constitutional monarchy. Therefore, it's a government is a federal parliamentary democracy with a constitutional monarchy. My beautiful country is the second freest country in the 2013 Index of Economic Freedom due to its stable political and legal environment. Our mission is to create sustainable economic growth with vibrant businesses and good job opportunities. Fortunately, exports, particularly in electronics and chemicals and services provide the main source of revenue for our economy. This allows the economy to purchase natural resources like water, which is scarce. We promote high levels of savings and investment through policies used to fund our citizens' health care and retirement needs. Our saving rates are remained among the highest in the world. With Australia being less populated than most countries, but having all this beautiful land, we have so much room to expand our businesses that could boost our economy even more. Australia is best known for a substantial protection on property rights, minimal corruption, and openness to global trade. Our financial system is extremely stable and public finances remain manageable. 
As I reflect on Greece's economic stability, I compare its problems to those that John Maynard Keyes were trying to fix during the World Wars. He believes that the consumers were not the cause of the Depression, but the lack of investment from the government. I assume that if Keynes were to look at my country today, he would be disappointed in our lack of help for labor freedom. He thought that unemployment rates could be lowered by the government sponsoring public work projects that would give jobs to ideal workers. I believe he's an inspiration for our country, and we can work together to rebuild this great nation of beautiful scenery and fantastic food. Yes, yes. Well, I can try to review Belgium from Mr. Hayek's point of view. He argued that the government intervention in the free market is destructive of individual values and could not prevent such economic issues such as inflation, unemployment, and recession. But we need to make government intervention. Our country could not function without it. Hayek would not agree with our tactics of putting social welfare into place, but we cannot leave our citizens high and dry. We have implemented Keynesian policies, and Hayek would dis greatly disagree with that. <laughs> well, Karl Marx would not be a huge fan of Singapore. This philosopher would not think that this capitalist country has a bright future ahead because he believed that capitalism is an economic system that would eventually destroy itself. Marx believed that the working class received few benefits for their labor, which he thought could be portrayed as unfair and unreasonable. His perce his perception of was that this only benefits the rich and exploits the poor. Marx also believed that property rights shouldn't be protected and that free enterprises should be abolished. This popular philosopher of the 19th century preferred a strong central government and opposed labor unions from decision making. Going along with Adam Smith's general idea of a natural law economy, I think we are doing pretty well in the eyes of Smith. With all the independence and freedom Australia has on the mixed market economy, it makes it very easy for our country to fall along the lines of self-interest and the idea of the invisible hand, especially with our competitive services. With a very low and sufficient unemployment rate, it really showcases how well our economy is flowing nicely with this natural law. With our astonishing urbanization, our economy is doing well with industrialization and businesses all, ar all around our beautiful country. Well guys, I think that the website is a positive add-on. I don't see why we should be in favor to take it down. It shows anyone who's interested where so many countries around the world are at economically. It draws an accurate light on Belgium, and I'm fine with that. What do you guys think? It's a wake-up call to my country and its broken-down government. We need to work together to fix this depression and debt we are in. Although I'm very pleased with the website and its ratings, I feel our country could be better represented by a more diverse source rather than the states as a whole. It's not good enough. Take it down. We can't be seen like this. We're only ranked second place. We deserve better. It sheds light on a bunch of nothing. It's based on a random group of people's perspective on countries. They consider themselves important just because they have PhDs, you know. Well, this has been very insightful, ladies. Thank you for speaking with us. On behalf of Belgium, I would just like to welcome you anytime. Thank you. This just in. <laughs> Justine. I looked at Shira. Personally. <laughs> just one more Sorry. <laughs> Justine. Yeah, just even lean back and go. Shira, stop. Shira, look away. Shira, look away. Shira, look away. Stop. We're doing it over again? Stop. They say the overall score has increased by 0 0.2 mm, points from the previous <laughs> Greece is a gorgeous country. In fact, it is the seventh most visited country in the European Union. My dem democratic country's economy. My democratic country's econ econ economy. Economy. You have to read. Oh God! Excuse me. <laughs> this allows the economy to purchase natural resources like water, which is scarce. 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 Yes. <laughs> we promote high levels of savings and investment. <laughs> 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 well, car mounts were not like, whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, come start a business with us, Singaporeans. <laughs> Hello, yes, I'm from um, Greece. My name is Alice Wonski. Hello, my name is Charles Dickinson. <laughs> I'm from Singapore.
Oh, dude, that was so funny. What's your name again? Charles. 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 Hello, I'm from. They must also identify their order of arrangement for each country in a timely manner by stating their criteria and the meaning and the meaning of every goddamn. <laughs> That's going to bloops. <laughs> Don't stop.